Welcome to Sister Power. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. And our special guest today is uh, Barbara Mitchell, Deborah Butler, and Patricia Blessman. Welcome. It's good to see you. Good to be here. Aloha. Aloha. You know, ladies, before we get started, I, I want to know how my girlfriends are doing with so much going on in 2020 with the with the um, COVID-19 and this crazy politics. How are you ladies doing physically, spiritually, and mentally? How are you doing? We can start with you, um, Patricia. You know, Sharon, I'm so glad that you asked that. Uh, I think nowadays we really have to go a little deeper with that question, how are you? Because usually we give that sort of bland, oh, I'm okay. And actually people may not be okay or may be dealing with a whole lot of stuff. So at this point in this juncture, at this particular time, it's important that we really dig deep and ask the more scintillating or, or dig up just a little bit deeper. Uh, 2020 has been a rough year, you know, and not only just because in, in particular my family, we not only had to deal with the pandemic, we, you know, we lost our oldest son on Mother's Day of all things. My father, my, um, my husband's step, uh, stepfather passed away on August 25th. My condolences so, to you. You know, so when you, when you start thinking about, you know, and I, and I, and I know other people who have gone through similar things, but you know, the ability to be able to mourn and, and honor our lost, our lost ones or our, the ones who have transitioned and gone on has been severely disrupted by this pandemic. And that's going to have an impact. On you. But I'm doing Pretty good. I figured out a way to stay sane, girl. <laughs> okay, that's what it takes. How about you, I can Barbara? Talk about my radical self-help plan in a minute. Okay. okay. <laughs> Barbara. And I am doing good, and I make myself remember uh, the good things. And even with this election, sometimes when I'm going there, I think of how blessed we are that Biden Harris actually won, and that gives me a lot of hope, even though there's, you know, 73 million Americans who did what they did. Um, I'm just grateful for the 80 million that know the difference between light and darkness and dictatorship and a democracy. Wow, how about you, Dr. D? Well, I protect myself by being a gentle warrior Anytime I feel run down or if I feel stress, like stress starting to affect me physically, I just pull it back and I assess the situation and I ask myself questions like, are you putting yourself first? Because I'm always putting everybody else first. Are you building strength, avoiding pain? I ask myself these questions. And I ask what's one of the one things that I can do to take better care of myself? Uh, because you have to take good care of yourself before you can save the world, you must save yourself first. So what I do is when I get up early in the morning, I protect my mornings by writing, praying, meditating, exercising, all that come before the news, all that come before Facebook and all the other social media and email or anything that may derail starting the day with love and intention. And it may be irresponsible to completely check out, but, but everything will be okay is what I tell myself. Nothing is gonna happen to you today that you and God together cannot handle. So I just take a few hours in the mornings to tune out before I tune in. And that makes me a gentle warrior. I love that idea. You know, I'm gonna remember that. Although I start off with a devotion every morning if it's needed. I stay battle ready. Today, ladies, 289,881 deaths from coronavirus in the United mm -hmm. States. Patricia, you have created a simplified guide to keep you and loved ones safe, protected, and prepared. Tell us about navigating a new world. Well, you know, I was fortunate back in March to have met Dr. Lane Rowling, who is an infectious disease uh, specialist, a virologist, international reputation, uh, surgeon, uh, uh, trained, the military trained uh, in chemical bio, biological warfare. And I've actually been working with him around understanding infectious disease, understanding 
its impact on people. There are very few people that really have um, an understanding of how, also how pandemics and endemics impact people psychologically. So this is just as much uh, a psychological crisis as it is a medical one. So we decided to team up and write a book and that would basically help people kind of wrap their head around what is, what is coming, what is here, and what our future looks like in terms of being able to live with COVID embedded as a, as a pathogen that's gonna be a part of this biome for the rest of our lives. Wow. So, and we want to make it simple. We want, and all the, the talks and discussions that we've had, we realized that we would never get through all the information that's, that we need to cover in this book. So, uh, you know, you know on, a, on a television show. So we've covered uh, talks like uh, various uh, avenues. We want to make the science accessible, accessible to, to the average person. Well, we cover things in our book like how any virus is spread, you know, personal protect, preparedness, how to prep your home, uh, a radical self care plan, mental health, and then finally seeking care should you become infected. Now, you know, we, we cover those topics it's a it's an easy to read guide. It's short, um, but it's jam packed with information. Uh, the Spanish edition Navagundo Par Un Nuevo Mundo comes out uh, this coming Monday, uh, so we're excited, really excited about that. Um, but we wanted to, the whole purpose of this book was to be able to give the common everyday person an opportunity to really put their head around all the things that they need to do in order to be able to successfully live, not just live and survive, but also to thrive in this new environment. Um, what can I say? It sounds new, like a must read to me. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I did get, I did, ahead, get a copy, I did get a copy of your book, Patricia, and you are right. It is a lot to wrap your mind around, but it is very helpful because it, it, you know, there's just things that you might not think of that would be of value and they are. So I recommend the book. <laughs> thank you, thank you. There's a testimonial here. But you know, there were so many, <laughs> we talked with people, you know, in our, in the talk shows that we've done, the radio shows that we've done, we realized that people had a lot of questions about a lot of different areas of, of care. And any one of those topics could be, um, could be uh, a full show in and of itself. But I thought, well, we want to give people a sort of an overview, again, so that they could, okay, I can get my head around this. I know what to do. I have a sense of what, what I need to do in order to be able to maintain myself and thrive while we go through this process. Because we know the next two years is going to be well, we've got like six months into what is going to be a heavy duty two year process. And it may be even mm -hmm. longer, but we know this first two years are gonna be gonna be challenging. Um, okay, well, you know, daily reported US COVID deaths top 3,000 for first time on eve of FDA vaccine authorization. Uh, what are you, your thoughts about this, Dr. D? Well, first, the book is definitely needed, and Love it's it. a good read. People need to realize that COVID-19 doesn't take holidays off. Right. doesn't take Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's, and all the holidays off. And the best way to show you love someone is to keep them safe. <laughs> it's easiest to let down our guard with good friends or family members who don't live with us because we know them and we trust them but through no fault of theirs, they may have come in contact with someone who's, who's COVID-19 positive. And if they have to travel to come to your house, there may be too many possible uh, infection points to count. Cool. So looking and feeling fine are no measures of how infectious someone may be. You can't look at somebody and tell if they have it or not. And the CDC says that, 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 that up to 60% of COVID is uh, transmission comes from people who are a symptomatic or pre-symptomatic. Think how bad you would feel. I know how bad I would feel if one of your vulnerable family members got sick because of you. I would feel horrible because I love my family. And the best way to show you love someone is to keep them safe. 
and protect. Oh. All right. Well, Barbara, be prepared. And be prepared. I love it. Well, Barbara, you you have a copy of Navigating a New World. What else was your takeaway? Um, I I have to think about it for a minute or two. So keep going. <laughs> okay, we'll keep going. No problem. Well, you know, <laughs> Dr. Fossey wants people to know that one of the lead scientists who developed the COVID-19 vaccine is a Black woman, Dr. Kizzy Corbett, which is just, you know, the vaccine is just something that everyone is waiting for. So I want to ask you ladies, what do you think about the vaccine? Are you willing to take the vaccine, Barbara? I would not be one of the first ones to take the vaccine, but I am, I, in the past, I've not been a vaccine person. And I told someone that when I was a kid up until about 12, I think I had everything under the sun. And I wondered if my body developed an immunity because I've not, I've never taken even the flu vaccine and I don't get, um, you know, I'm hitting on wood and I don't get the flu. I don't get cold. So I probably, I probably would take this one after a while though, just because this is something new and something very different from anything else. I would, I would take it after, after it's kind of been tested and they know the side effects, I would take it. Yeah. Well, you know, Patricia, you are, were, you, you emailed me and said there are quiz questions, uh, you should ask about the vaccine. Could you go over a few of those with us? I know which one we need to find out if it should be Pfizer or should it be Johnson & Johnson? It, well, first of all, we want to start with the fact that, you know, when they talk about emergency authorization, basically what that means is that they haven't really finished vetting the vaccines. And so they're, what they're saying is that they want to release it early because they think that it might work and to save lives, but it's not really fully vetted. So the first people that are taking this vaccine are really part of a field test to see how effective it really is. Um, there, are but, three, there are three vaccines that are out there right now, Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson, four, and AstraZeneca. Um, I think what's gonna be important is that you know which one, if you're gonna take one now, you need to know which one it is. Um, each one, they're not all the same. Uh, Pfizer and Moderna have not really been, they're not one of the biotech giants. Johnson & Johnson is. Um, AstraZeneca did not have as high of an efficacy rating. Um, so you should know something about the reputation of each company. Um, you should also be very aware of your own health profile. Um, do you have, and you need to ask e of each of these, whichever company you're going with, do they have data supporting that their vaccine is effective and safe for you? For example, if you have lupus or you have some other kind of immunocompromised uh, uh, chronic disease, will that, you know, will that vaccine make it worse? Uh, will it be effective for you? Did they have people who had lupus in their, you know, in their vaccine trials and how did they do in their vaccine trials? Um, okay. Well, you know, that's good information. You know, let's just, I, I noticed, that, um, Barbara, you wanted to chime in and I want everyone to see Dr. Kizzy Corbett's picture so we can know who she is and mm -hmm. they'll bring that up. But you wanted to chime in um, very quickly I, on the vaccine before we move forward. Yes, I did. I just wanted to start agree in that each person really needs to know their body. And if, if I think if one has always taken vaccines, they've always taken the flu vaccines, they should, con they should continue to do that. And after they take the vaccine, simple remedies that you have done in the past, you know, wear your mask. I'm a user of Vicks, <laughs> mouthwash. Those things, anything that can't do any harm, right. I think you have to continue to practice. And they've even said that 
are exercising, walking. Uh, but of course, they did say, you know, you should keep your mask on when you're outside. Now, I, I saw something that said that where people thought that if they were out in the air, they could walk and they didn't need it. But I did read something today that said you should have it on at all times. Well, that's not going to hurt you. So why not do that? And that's where I am is know your body. It's know the you. first time you even think you have a, have a sniffle. I'm a believer and I'm probably selling this, but in bits, I mean, simple things uh, that you've done in the past, continue to do those even when you take the vaccine. Right. And I, I'm totally in agreement okay. with that, Barbara, because I think that sometimes we, we, we wait for a pill or something that's going to fix the problem as opposed to really just taking care of our health and remembering to do the things to exercise. Like I get up every morning at six o'clock and I have, and I gather with other friends and we walk every day for three hours, okay. and three miles, but we, you know, but that is a part of our health routine so that, you know, we have the you know, our vitamins that we make that I make sure that everybody in our family takes the supplements, particularly, especially vitamin D but, and also to make sure that we get exercise and sunshine every day. And as well, and the other piece is making sure that we socially connect with fr friends and family every day on some level, whether it's by Zoom or with my friends, I get to see them in person every day. Okay. Um, but, but, but taking care of doing those things. The, with the paradox about vaccines is that, you know, they work better on healthier people. So. <laughs> So you All right, well, let's move on. Well, okay. before you move on, I would like okay. to chime. I would like to say something yes. about vaccines. I, I don't, I'm not a vaccine person. Uh, okay. Some vaccines are already breaking records and getting FDA approval will be an unprecedented achievement. But before you go back to your old way of being because of the vaccine, the health experts, all they say they warn that a vaccine isn't the end all and be all solution to combating the virus and that wearing masks may be in style for a whole lot longer than what we expect. So I'm not a vaccine person. I don't even take doctors or prescription drugs, but uh, I'm, I'm an herbalist. But I would say, um, as know your body. Okay. Be in tune with your body. Right. I love that. Well, you know, Georgia's on my mind. And we need to win the Senate. Uh, the Georgia runoffs will decide who controls the Senate. What should we know, Barbara or Dr. D? Barbara, what should we know about this? You're in Atlanta right now in Democrat John Ossoff and, and Reverend uh, Warnock are running at this particular time. Well, one of the things that, that I do know is that many of us who voted early before are waiting to do that again. And that starts on the 14th. And uh, many of us also have mail-in ballots just in case. But the, uh, in the prior election, the, the voters were just, we were all just kind of quiet. And it was just like, we're gonna go to the polls. And I believe that is what is going on now in the effort from the volunteers and money is coming in from all around the country. And I'm, I'm going to say this, but I do believe that there are some things that the Republicans are doing that is working against them. Like for example, the, the, the group that's saying, um, telling the Republicans not to vote. Well, that's not smart, but a lot of people are thinking things just because they hear them, you know, they believe them. That's how we got a lot of the conspiracy things. So I'm believing a lot of these things, are, I'm praying literally, that they are working in our favor. And I, cause I'm just kind of hearing, well, you know, maybe uh, uh, the president is working against us. The things he's saying, the things he's, it's confusing people. And because there are people who simply believe what he says, it doesn't matter whether it's a lie or truth. Uh, I think that could work for us. So if they do not, uh, mess with the machines and if we get out there early i do believe we have a very good chance and as many of you might know uh, the uh also the debate uh, purdue did not show up you know he didn't even bother to show up so um the georgians are just being quiet and getting to the polls also 
taking back the Senate gives us our best chance to pass strong COVID. If we flip the Senate this January, we can make real progress on the big issues like healthcare, climate change, and, and, and rebuilding our economy from the ground up. I began to reunite. We, we really need to reunite our country again. And on January 5th, Georgians will decide the course of the country. And if you care about these things, then we've got to get, we, we've got to get it. We, we've got to give it everything we've got. Exactly. And we have to think of simple ways that we can make it work, you know, from the local politicians. It has to start there because you cannot expect the, 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 the president to do everything. And Patricia might know more about this than I do, but politically, the system is designed so that every representative represents somebody. Usually they don't bother to figure out who those people are until it's time to vote. And that's been on the books. My mom used to talk about how even if you had a legal problem, you could go to your precinct captain and, and you could get information. All of that's non-existence now. Mm -hmm. Some of those things need to come back. And if we don't bring that back and work with people, we may not be so lucky the next time around. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, well, I think we have two great candidates with John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock. I feel like they will look out for the Georgians rather than looking out for themselves. Um, they they will, will not have their own interests at heart. It would be the interests of the people. And I think that that's the kind of leadership we need in the United States Senate right now. Since the election, an estimated 23,000 Georgians have turned 18 and are now eligible to vote for the first time. But in 2020 election, it was like about 2.5 million registered voters in Georgia, and they all stayed at home and they didn't vote. In 2016, nearly 40% of registered voters stayed home and they didn't vote. So with the polls statistically being tied as it is, the Senate control will come down to who reaches and who turns out more voters. And the margins could be even slimmer than 13,000 that gave Georgia uh, to Biden. So, um, Democrats right now, we have to do everything we can, do the, do the same thing that the GOP, as they're going all, all in, we have to do that or yeah. we will have no chance of winning. Yeah, well, it's about, you know, this segment. One other thing. This segment is about make America smart again. That. So we have One 40 thing that, is Go ahead, Robert. Oh, I was just going to say in terms of Georgia that uh, Ms. Adams made it possible for anyone who turns 18 before January election date, they can vote. And that's a right. lot. That was a big right. issue. Going to the schools, everybody, that's a lot of people. So those wow. are the kinds of things I think that, that falls into really making America smart again. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Before we move forward, uh, Patricia, did you want to add, you know, a minute or two, or thirty seconds or so? On thirty that? seconds. Uh, I think it's important that we not only get the executive branch, but also get uh, the legislative branch of government under uh, the control of people who really care about the people that they serve. I think as Americans, we need to have a paradigm shift in in terms of the way we think about elective rep representatives, and I think part of it has to start with feeling like we are worthy of having representatives who love us. And, and, and when we get to that point, then we will be able to start electing a different kind of person to go to the state house and to the federal houses to represent us. You yeah. have to decide that you want somebody that who sees themselves as a public servant and as a servant leader and as a person who loves the person that they serve. We've had Ooh. two the other kind of people in office for too long, and and we yeah. and we, we reaped, we and we we have reaped what that has meant, and we're reaping it now in terms of the current administration that's in. So I'm glad that that tide is shifting. As Barbara said, I'm glad that there were enough people who saw lightness versus dark, and now we need to see love versus indifference. Mm. We, need pick, we need to pick representatives who love us. First and foremost. Who First love. and foremost, absolutely. Well, we have 40 days until 
uh, inauguration day in 2021 and black women to serve on Biden's all women communication team. I'm, I am just talk about make America smart again. Let's talk about these women ladies who are Simone Sanders and Kareem. President elect Biden is put is he has in his cabinet people who look like us in the White House, I should say. People who look like us. What is your take on that? Uh, I want to start with you again, uh, Barbara, on the Black women to serve on Biden's all women communication team. Well, I think that, you know, he first of all acknowledged that it was the Black population that really put him there. And he is showing his appreciation for that. And just on another sidebar, I think that the student loans should definitely be paid off because there was 19 million uh, young people registered to vote. And that also helped to pull him over. And we really need them to just kind of clean up a lot of the mess that's gone on. So I think that would that would really endear them to, uh, to him. And I'm just real pleased because I think women, honestly, I have to say it, women are better administrators. Women are better at getting things done because we have to multitask. That's, that's what we do. And I think that within itself is making America smart again. Oh, like that. Deborah, you know, I just want to ask a question to you ladies and we can come back to that. Because, you know, we, we were talking about, you know, what's going on now with the um, present people uh, in the White House. Why are we as a country willing to tolerate all the death and destruction while we sit and watch? And uh, you know, it, it's, it's just sad. It's well, you sad. know, I think in, in initially when this, when COVID first broke out, the death and destruction, you know, they really painted it as and it was true that a lot of African Americans, people of color, Native Americans were the, the primary victims of this. And I think that there was a, there's a hole in the soul of America where they were kind of comfortable with that, that they were kind of okay with it. I'm, 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 you know, it's, it's, I'm just saying, okay. When, you know, the Native Americans asked for federal funds to help with uh, COVID, this was back in April, I believe April and May, instead of sending them funds or health or healthcare or doctors or medicines, they sent them body bags. I was appalled. I was appalled. So, I mean, so if you have a country that's kind of okay with that, I mean, not knowing, and they weren't attending to the fact that eventually, you know, the most vulnerable are the first to go. But after that, you know, COVID doesn't care. <laughs> race you are, how much money you make, you know, and it was eventually going to hit everyone. Now I think that they're, you know, they're, they're, they're seeing that now. Um, but I think that they got way too comfortable with it just being, oh, it's just happening to people of color. We're okay. You know, we don't want a mask. We don't want, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, ladies, we're going to have to continue this conversation. Uh, yeah, we have to continue this again and do episode four. And um, this has been wonderful. Thank you, Queen. Thank you so much. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Please wear your face mask and social distance. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Merry Christmas. Take care of yourself and each other. Aloha.